So with all this hype about the 3000 series coming out, let's talk about NVLink, or as it used to be called, SLI. I have a little bit of a bone to pick here. I was completely sold on NVLink and SLI before, and now it's disappeared. Hey guys, remember to subscribe, hit that thumbs up notification bell. That way you guys can see all these videos that comes out. Really makes me happy, so just please subscribe. All right, so let's get right into it. SLI and VLink. Just a little quick explanation before we get into it. SLI and NVLink, practically they do the same thing. It's just basically having multiple GPUs and it's how you connect them. NVLink was just the newer version of SLI, which was supposed to be more powerful and have more bandwidth. You know, that never really worked out. So basically it's when you connect multiple GPUs. SLI was the terminology that was used for many years. And then for the RTX generation, they decided to change over to NVLink, which I guess is still what it's called today, even though it's kind of non-existent. So, all right, having that little explanation out of the way, let's get a little bit of history on why I'm a little bit peeved that SLI and NVLink are completely irrelevant nowadays. Back in the day, years ago, if you were building a really like sweet high-end gaming computer, maybe water-cooled, um, basically what you would see like on magazines. I mentioned this because you know, as you grow up, you see these sort of awesome computers, almost like Lamborghinis of computers, and it's something that you either want to emulate or it makes you excited to build your own computer. And back in the day, there was nothing more exciting than basically having an SLI system with multiple GPUs. Now, as the 4K generation started where really early 4K monitors came around, that was the big thing. People would throw like four of the most powerful NVIDIA GPUs in their system just to be able to get close to playing 4K. It's not like it is today where one GPU can do it. Basically back then, SLI, you basically had to combine multiple GPUs in order to run one 4K monitor or even multiple monitors of high resolution. Even in its varied history, SLI had varying levels of support. Basically, it came down to like game developers really optimizing it for their games. Some games took advantage of it great and you got multiple gpus and things really scaled well other games didn't even have it at all some games were kind of buggy and it didn't really work so historically it's never really been something that outright worked because in the past maybe there was a little more reason for it you did need multiple gpus to run anything close to 4k um, where now like we mentioned you can do it on one gpu so aside from those performance issues aside I mean, it did look pretty awesome. Like I mentioned before, if you have a really nice water-cooled build, you see four high-end GPUs in there, that was sort of like the golden standard to really make you excited. You know, like when you have a poster on your wall of like a Lamborghini or something like that, that's what a computer nerd would have is maybe a poster of a really big case with big, you know, big fans, not RGB back then. They didn't really have RGB like, like they have now. Um, and then with these massive GPUs just stacked on top of each other, that was really cool. But that's pretty much a bygone era now. Even if we talk in more practical terms, I mean, not too many people really even want to buy three or four GPUs, but a lot of people did buy two. You know, it was sort of reasonable to expect that maybe if you got one 1080, you could get a second 1080, get more performance instead of maybe getting a Titan card or something like that. And as enthusiasts, it's always fun to get hardware, fun to try SLI, put two GPUs together. So there's that aspect of it as well. But also I can see that having one powerful GPU makes things a lot more streamlined for 99% of people so that way you don't have to mess with NVLink bridges or SLI bridges you could just make everything nice and straightforward um, that's a plus in most cases aesthetically it's a minus because once again even if you're doing two GPUs you have a really cool SLI bridge in there some of the more recent ones had RGB in it not to mention if you're water cooling it you can make different blocks and connections where you see the liquid flow through so there's a lot of nice little details Details there mostly for the enthusiasts not really for the mainstream market so that's why it's just a little sad to see that stuff like basically completely disappear and that's where we get to today's point if you guys have seen the new 3070 and 3080 they don't even have the little NV link or SLI little fingers anymore where basically he would make the connection so that pretty much tells you that Nvidia completely has given up at least for the mainstream GPUs the only one that does have it so far is the 3090 but that's a whole completely different GPU maybe that's something that's going to be used for other applications that's not only gaming Nvidia did say it's going to be Titan level performance meaning that who knows maybe it's something that's 
that's going to be more usable in, in rendering applications, um, possibly even video editing or, or, or 3D modeling, something that the 3080 and 3070, even if they may be capable of doing it, they're more geared towards basically pure gamers. So maybe this is NVIDIA's message saying that if you didn't get the hint that the 20 series NVLink was pretty much dead on arrival, this is going to be pretty much the confirmation that NVLink it really is no more since you don't even have the physical connection for it anymore. And I mean, from NVIDIA's perspective, I think it makes total sense. Look at the power that the 3070 and 3080 are now putting out. Even the 3080, you could almost max out a lot of 4K games. So most people are playing on 1440p or even 1080p. Even the 3070 is gonna be more than capable of doing an absolutely unbelievable job at getting really, really great performance. So in terms of performance, there really is no practical need anymore for multiple GPUs since single GPUs have so much power that they're able to drive pretty much the main monitors that people are gonna be using. We're still pretty far from 8K. Maybe that's somewhere where the 3090 and NVLink could come in handy. Maybe having two of those together is something that's going to be for 8K, but that's such a, a small little niche market that we're not even anywhere close to that. So I guess since these GPUs are powerful enough to single-handedly drive most gaming monitors, I guess Nvidia really doesn't care about those enthusiasts whose feelings might be hurt by not using multiple GPUs. No more cool NVLink bridges, no more cool water-cooled connections. And as we mentioned, the 3090 for non-gaming applications, there definitely are cases where multiple GPUs still make sense and you don't need an NVLink branch. Now, this is going to be true with other applications and content creation. For example, the video editing and coloring program DaVinci Resolve does utilize multiple GPUs, but of course, not for gaming. Um, for gaming, we're going to have to see if the 3090 does anything with that NVLink or if that's really meant for like very fringe cases. But I don't really know what else you're going to drive aside from an 8K monitor with a 3090, because by the looks of it, a 3090 is going to be able to destroy almost any 4K game that you really throw at it, even at high refresh rates. So that's really meant, I think, for the future, future, future. So let's not worry about that for now. Main conclusion here is MVLink is physically no more, so we don't have to take any hints from NVIDIA. It's pretty much donezo.